Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, I have completed marking the paper for the topic ROI and RI and based on my marking, uh, I, it came to my mind that I think I have to make this recording. Now, the question is quite straightforward. Even the question, I mean the uh, information given uh, is quite straightforward. But uh, unfortunately, there are some very basic mistakes that I think uh, I have to talk about so that you avoid it in the exam. The requirement says that you have to calculate both the ROI and RI of the new investment for each of the two divisions. Comment on these results, taking into consideration the manager's views about residual income. Now, like I said, usually in the section C question, you will have both calculation and theory questions. So 10 marks here, you can assume that uh, the calculation will give you five marks and the comment will give you another five marks. Although, if you look at the marking scheme, it's, it's actually six marks for both. But uh, of course, there will be a cap. Lah. You will never get 12 marks. Okay, but now, for every question that we do, they are actually, uh, or there is actually something that they want to test uh, us in this case. Uh, what, let me start with the most important thing, which is, the formula of ROI and RI, surprisingly, uh, quite a number of you uh, made a mistake. In fact, it tells me that you do not remember the formula, which is quite, I think, uh, sad because ROI and RI uh, is among the topic when it comes to the formula, it is the easiest, really. If you don't memorize that, and this is not PT, yeah? this is our final mock before you go to the final exam. So I hope if you watch this recording, you will never make this mistake in the exam. Now let me do that first. So I'm gonna open a new, uh, so I'm gonna start with this. Eh? This is a very basic formula and I hope you focus on this. Uh, most of you uh, fortunately knows the formula or, or rather know the formula, but there is also an important uh, related issue that I wanna talk about later uh, when it comes to the basic calculation. Yeah. So let's uh, open a new sheet and in this case, you have two division. Please stay tuned and, and focus uh, on my recording here because there are uh, a number of very important details for you, especially uh, what the question wants, what the question really wants. So I hope you to learn from this recording. Again, what I always repeat in the class, answer what is asked. Do not answer what you know and what you want to answer. Because you will not get marks if you do that. You only answer when you are asked to answer, you know, a question. Meaning answer only the question. Anyway, you get my point. So let's calculate the ROI and later RI. Okay. How do we calculate the ROI, guys? It's a very simple uh, formula. You need the PBIT or the profit in general and you need the uh, capital investment. Right, so it's quite sad that some of us do not know uh, that ROI is simply the PBIT divided by capital investment. Uh, in this case, for instance, yeah, we have the capital investment, the easiest one. We will do this in million, lah. So this is in million. Capital investment is eighty two point eight. For A and B, you have 40.6. Okay. The PBIT. One of the mistakes that your friends uh, made uh, was that some of them took, uh, some of you took sales and divide by capital. This is, I think, a very basic mistake. Please, you cannot make that mistake in the exam. Uh, I'm, and like I said, when we discuss one topic, try to relate to other topic as well. In every topic, there are some easy things and you do not make mistakes there, my dear. All the basic things, you don't make mistakes there, including the basic formula like this. So that's one mistake. Uh, another mistake, which uh, I think again, because you have, you know, maybe the understanding is it's not, it's not good yet. So you have to work on it. I'm not complaining here. Yeah? I hope you know this is for your exam. So you can learn something. Some of you, you know that from your sales, you can take the profit by multiplying 28%. Uh, you know, you multiply 44.6 million by 28%. That's it. Some, some of you took the reverse. Like 28%, uh, you find what is that and then you minus. 
yang ni 28% kan the balance is uh, 72% kan uh, dia ambil yang 72% tu bahagi dengan capital my dear that 72% is the cost why do you do that kan uh, I mean, but i think there is only one reason you do not remember the formula if you remember the formula that's it habis it's as easy as 38% multiply by 44.6 which is your sales by the way it is not your profit you have to multiply by profit margin to get your profit figure then only you divide by the capital okay so let me do that eh 44.6 multiply by 44.6 multiply by 0.28 that's it and that's your profit therefore your ROI is equal to PBIT divided by capital you can then you can change the format to make it percentage or you can multiply by 100 lah 15.08 ataupun 15 lah okay guys eh dah settle and then ni lagi satu the revenue is 21.8 multiply by 21.8 multiply by 0.33 okay then you get the ROI I can simply drag this Dah simple. Ni you dapat tiga maka nanti RIP dapat tiga maka dan six marks already out of ten marks. Basic formula. Okay. Ini most of you dah tahu. Tapi I ingat dos yang I nak bagi tahu dos yang tak yang salah kan nanti dalam exam tak pula uh, uh, kena belajar lah. Uh, okay. Kita okay accepted. So anyway, then next for your RI. This waktu RI dengan RI ni dia satu topik dalam bahagian yang sama kan sebab in fact formula dia lebih kurang sama the difference is that okay of course nanti dalam jawapan kan uh, you, you letaklah something like this some of you bercakap pasal ROI ni dia dia, dia a relative figure dia percentage RI absolute figure dia dalam dollar kan you know what you are not answering the question so bear with me nanti I bagi tahu kenapa I kata you tak jawab soalan uh, okay anyway so PBIT sama sebijik kau je lah okay and then PBIT dia buat apa nak dapatkan RI? PBIT minus imputed interest How do you calculate your imputed interest? Jawapan dia adalah 12% 12% tu tak ada seorang punya guna dalam exam When it comes to comment Tak ada seorang punya guna ha, Nanti I explain kat mana you boleh guna Dan sebenarnya bila you guna 12% cost of capital tu lah Cost of capital bila you guna yang tu Maknanya dia menunjukkan you faham soalan ni nak apa you faham soalan ni nak apa again i will tell you that okay anyway ya yeah, ibu macam marah ke guys tak eh? I'm, i'm not angry I'm, i'm actually just uh, motivated to share with you so that you don't make the same mistake eh so i ambil capital investment darab dengan 0.12 lah uh, so i don't look like i'm angry ke apa tak eh uh, okay anyway uh, soalan akan bagi kalau ada soalan ri uh, residual income confirm soalan akan bagi cost of capital which is 12% in this case eh And then uh, yang ni pun sama Kenapa tak I guna balik figure yang ada tu PBIT I guna balik figure dia Capital investment I guna balik figure dia So 0.12 multiply by capital investment Dia dapat yang tu kan yang ni RIU adalah Dalam bentuk dollar lah kan So PBIT minus This is 2.552 million Many of you get it right so I'm happy Cuma yang tak dapat jawapan tu I Satu tak dapat jawapan lah fine lah Tapi yang lebih menyedihkan adalah the mistake that you do tu Uh, bila kata menyedih kata mana nak kata elakkanlah lepas ni uh, I don't want you to be demotivated jangan salah faham eh uh, kita belajar kita belajar tapi kena belajarlah <laughs> kena belajar kena kuat semangat okey dah settle tengok guys now when you do this you will get six marks confirm habis cerita six marks bayangkan kalau you ingat formula dia yang tak susah pun sebenarnya guys tak susah pun lepas ni you nak pergi high level kan kalau you ingat yang ni dia dah dapat enam markah tau enam markah banyak eh out of 10 kalau kata kalau contoh you tak nak comment that is that that can help you pass already six marks because it's more than half the mark kan cuma tengok ini yang paling penting sebab i boleh kata uh, adalah dua tiga orang yang jawapan tu almost i mean like uh, hit the target lah bagus lah jawapan tu uh, tetapi tak ada seorang pun yang satu tadi yang tu apa tu tak sebut i faham lah i pun bagi tahu kan dalam exam bukan kita nak perfect uh, cuma Uh, I nak bagi tahu ada something missing from your mind All of you Ada something missing from your mind when it comes to this question Kita belajar eh, okay guys eh So kita hati terbuka, kita belajar Saya nak cerita apa ni, tengok eh Cuba cepat di soalan Calculate both the return on investment and residual income Okay, now To be honest with you I teringat, I think I bagi tips 
I kata you kena study like comparison ke apa Or maybe pros and cons between ROI dengan RI I, I, I rasa tips yang I bagi tu tak salah Tapi mungkin boleh jadi confusing Sebab jamai yang jawab macam tu Ramai yang dalam soalan ni bila dia komen Dia kata apa kebaikan ROI berbanding RI Apa kebaikan RI berbanding ROI Itu semua textbook knowledge which is important Tapi bukan itu yang soalan tanya Bukan itu yang soalan tanya Itu maksud I tadi I nak bagi tahu There is something that is missing from 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 our mind here When I look at your answer Okay, apa dia? Okay. Before I go there eh? Kena macam soalan betul-betul uh, Mana kita punya ni? Allah Rabbi, I dah tutup ke? Oh kat sini ha. So ini saya tak, okay sorry ha, ni. Basic calculation kan? Okay Before before I go to the more important part Yang ni, okay ini careless mistake lah I faham lah kan You dah buat betul dah Uh, residual income adalah PBIT minus imputed interest kan Tapi ada kawan you, dia buat ni dalam bentuk negatif Sebab memang imputed interest ni cost PBIT ni duit masuk So ini dia buat negatif dengan I buat eh I buat ni dalam bentuk negatif lah contoh Tapi I think some of you, you get the idea already Apa mistake yang kawan kita buat Ha, dia jadi besar pula Maknanya your residual income lagi besar daripada income You ada duit, lepas you belanja duit tu, duit tu jadi lagi banyak <laughs> Ah uh, kan kan pelik tu. Uh, tapi nak kata ini ini careless mistake. I think it's a genuine mistake. Dan bagi I I I ini uh, bukan masalah yang besar cuma rugi lah Sebab you dapat jawapan you salah. Faham kan maksud I? Sebab akhirnya uh, you kena tambah lah kalau letak ni dalam bentuk negatif dan you kena tambah PBIT tambah imputed interest. Tambah tu maksud I dalam formula ni tambah tapi because imputed interest tu is already a negative figure. Bila you tambah tambah tu maknanya tolak lah I hope you faham maksud I ni eh. Uh, so tambah tolak tu atau bracket dengan tak bracket tu dalam exam sangat penting Tolong check yang balik, balik yang tu guys Tolong check yang tu eh Ah dah, maknanya nak kata itu persoalan uh, Persoalan formula uh, Yang tak ingat formula tu, again you are watching this Lepas ni tak nak dah buat kesilapan macam tu Sebab kalau tak keluar section C pun keluar dalam uh, A dan B tu I think quite likely lah R dan R ni macam famous juga uh, Kan so jangan buat salah lah, okay dah settle Now, yang kedua pula, tengok eh Sekali dengan yang ni lah This is not a general comparison Ada some of us, cuba baca balik soalan Calculate both the ROI and residual income Okay, lepas tu dia kena comment on this result Dia nak kata Apa yang bagusnya pakai ROI berbanding ROI Dalam contoh spesifik Bitcoin Dia bukan kata compare residual income dengan return on investment Sebab tu bila you cakapkan contohnya ROI ni sebab dia kira percentage uh, Dia boleh uh, compare between Division yang uh, different sizes Or organization of different sizes Itu kebaikan ROI tak? Kebaikan ROI tapi tak dapat markah Bukan itu yang dia tanya Apa lagi? ROI dan residual income ada cost of capital kan? Cost of capital it represents the risk So kalau projek tu ada berbeza risk Residual income boleh kira projek yang ada different risk tu Dia boleh cater to that different risk Itu kebaikan ROI kan? Tetapi itu tak ditanya dalam ni Tak ditanya guys Habis tu apa benda yang ditanya dalam ni? Siapa yang sebut absolute figure Absolute income dalam dolar, absolute figure kan ROI dalam percentage Ada-ada kaitan sikit tapi not 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 exactly that Kalau you kata Again ROI tu dalam bentuk percentage Absolute income tu dalam bentuk cash kan uh, And therefore cash is better ke lagi senang nak faham Percentage lagi senang faham ke Itu tak ada markah Tetapi yang menjadi markah sekarang adalah isu Goal congruence Kan soalan kata comment on the result okay, Nanti you tengok tau comment on the result tu You nak komen kan? 15, 17 dan 2.5, 2.3 yang ni kan? Okay, you nak komen on the result uh, Taking into consideration the manager's views about residual income Yang residual income tu, yang ni dia kata ish uh, Dia argue yang kita sepatutnya guna RI sebab RI yang memberikan goal, goal congruence Ataupun better goal congruence, so itu cerita dia sebenarnya Cerita dia, kalau pakai ROI, kalau pakai ROI dia boleh menyebabkan goal incongruence Therefore, apa maksud goal congruence tu? Goal congruence maknanya manager of the division nak A company as a whole nak B, kan lawan jadi goal incongruence, tak sepakat sepatutnya apa yang company nak itu yang division nak barulah selari boleh eh? Ha, tetapi bila tak ada goal congruence maka jadi contradict Okey, dalam kes ni, bila soalan tanya antara ROI dengan RI Again, bukan dia tanya general comparison between ROI dengan RI Bukan Okey, tetapi soalan kata pasal goal congruence Dengan pakai ROI, bukan bukan all the time, jangan salah faham 
bukan all the time tetapi sometimes ROI can cause goal incongruence sometimes sometimes tu bila contohnya set nanti saya tunjuk okey dalam keadaan ROI boleh menyebabkan goal incongruence RI menjadi penyelamat RI yang menunjuk yang memberikan kita satu idea untuk buat keputusan yang ada goal congruence yang ada kata sepakat company division nak macam tu dan benda, benda tu pun company nak juga so dia selari tengok eh okay, I'll come back to that dan nanti I harap I ingat untuk sebut pasal yang nombor dua ni okay tengok now I explain sebenarnya dia nak cerita pasal apa I nak explain tau you kena ambil dua benda dalam soalan I simplify eh soalan dah bagi tahu eh dia kata currently both division A dengan division B dia punya ROI of which division is 16% current ROI 16% dengar betul-betul tau okay. bila current ROI 16% okay, ni dalam soalan mana pun you kena faham betul-betul yang ni kalau kita ada projek yang mana dia sama dengan current ROI ataupun higher ini division punya cerita maka division manager A ke B ke dia akan kata yes to that project kalau projek tu 60% projek ni investment lah apa-apa yang you nak buat macam dalam soalan ni dia buat projek baru kan uh, projek baru tu dia kira oh alamak projek ni 15% B pula dia punya projek dia projek lain lah tapi 17% so kalau projek tu 16% or above dia akan accept itu je cerita dia tetapi bila A, A cerita A, B cerita B lah yang cakap terus lah kenapa ada orang ataupun ramai lah juga yang compare antara A dengan B Oh A lagi bagus lah, A dia punya capital lagi besar lah Okay, benda tu betul As in, when you look at the fact of the question Memang benda tu betul A ni dia punya capital lagi besar pada division B, betul kan? Tapi soalan tak tanya tu my dear Sebab tu I kata kena jawab, jawab soalan ataupun faham soalan betul-betul Soalan tak kata Compare performance of division A and division B tak uh, Yang I kata hidden from your mind tu adalah uh, Dia bukan nak tahu Apa comparison antara A dengan B tak ada. A, A lah. B, B lah. Yang, yang compare dulu tu. Bukan itu ceritanya. Ceritanya compare untuk A ke, untuk B ke pakai ROI lagi bagus ke? Pakai ROI. Oh in other words, pakai ROI uh, boleh tak rely on ROI je ataupun perlu juga ROI. Ha, itu sebenarnya isu dia. Jawapan kita adalah A ke B ke ROI tak cukup. Kena guna ROI, kena guna ROI baru kita buat keputusan yang betul. Apa maksud keputusan yang betul? It gives you goal congruence. Itu cerita dalam soalan ni. Okay. Okay, now let me come back here. So kalau you tengok dalam, kalau you faham yang ni kan Untuk division A, jangan kacau B lah, A, A lah, B, B lah kan Jangan compare dulu tu dah, tak, itu bukan ditanya Okay, now A, 15% Maka dia kata apa? Tak boleh The moment you accept this project Nanti division A punya ROI yang asalnya 16 Dia akan turun jadi 15 Sebab project itu dia punya ROI lower Itu je ceritanya Maka A kata, no I won't accept this project B kata, oh dia not only uh, the same, it is above So, B kata accept the project Itu je So, apa ceritanya? Ceritanya menggunakan ROI Division A will reject the project Division B will accept Now, come the most important part Ingat guys, dalam exam Kan I kata tadi, goal congruence adalah antara division dengan company Macam mana company nak decide? Macam mana company nak decide whether to accept or not? Dia akan tengok cost of capital dia Cost of capital adalah 12% kan? Guys, senang cerita faham macam ni, saya tulis sikit eh Saya tulis kat sini Nanti panjang pula dan dalam FM yang you akan buat lepas ni InsyaAllah all of you, I mean all of I mean, you pass paper ni, you akan buat FM You akan belajar lebih detail, sangat detail tentang cost of capital Tapi saya bagi senang je Cuba baca nama dia guys Terus persen ni apa? Cost of capital Maknanya, cost lah, duit keluar eh? ROI apa? Return on investment Senang cerita, ROI tu duit dapat Cost of capital, cost tu duit keluar, betul tak? So dalam konteks company, dalam konteks company Kalau you kira projek division A ke division B ke again doesn't matter Kalau projek tu ROI dia 11% Ataupun senang katanya lower than cost of capital Company said no Tetapi cuba tengok sekarang apa yang berlaku For both division A and division B Projek untuk both A dan B Is higher than the company's cost of capital Maka company kata yes to this project Nampak tak? B kata yes juga, company pun kata yes juga Maka goal congruence Tetapi disebabkan A Dia punya ROI tu lower, 15 kan lower than 
Sistem kan dia kata tak division manager yang kata tak tapi company kata yes. Company kata memang dah 15 tu rendah daripada awak punya ROI. Saya tak kisah company kata. Company kata asalkan kos kita 12. Bila ROI kita 15 walaupun A tak setuju company kata setuju. Itu yang jadi incongruence. Itu yang berlaku contradiction. Manager A nak, company uh, uh, manager A tak nak, company kata nak. Itu cerita dia guys. Therefore dalam situasi begini Division A hampir-hampir buat kesilapan dan salah kan Sebab tu datanglah RI Itulah argument yang manager tu sebut Dia kata guna RI tu Would result in better goal congruence Kenapa? Sebab company would accept uh, any project Kalau dia punya RI adalah positif Asalkan positif dia akan terima So you cuba you tengok Again kalau you kira dengan betul lah ha, kan? Kalau daripada awal lagi salah tu Problem lah kan nak buat macam mana kan ha, Tapi jawapan ni nanti tu akan di Relate dengan, uh, I mean your comment nanti will depend on your calculation lah But I think now you can see the picture already right Both A dengan B dapat positif figure betul tak Bahkan A punya cash figure untuk RI tu lagi tinggi kan But then again kita tak compare A dengan B guys Oh A is better RI than B Higher RI for A than B No no no, that's not what we are talking about Tapi what we are talking about adalah B tak ada issue lah Memang accept kalau pakai RI dia kata accept Company accept, B pun accept Kalau pakai RI B accept, company pun accept. Tetapi A. A berdasarkan RI sebab dia positif kan, A akan accept. Dan company pun sebab dia positif, company pun akan accept. Di situlah datanya goal congruence. Itu je ceritanya. Bahawa menggunakan RI can lead to goal incongruence dalam keadaan itu. RI yang menyelamatkan keadaan. RI yang suggest that A ke B ke they should proceed with the Uh, investment and the company says the same so this is what we call goal congruence uh, boleh tak? I harap you faham, kalau tak faham tanya dalam group last kali, uh, ini lagi satu, ada kawan kita yang katanya ada pernah sebut, mungkin uh, mungkin you lupa nak tumpu perhatian ataupun you lupa atau you dah terbiasa kan, tolong guys apa dia tolong, jangan buat apa yang macam kawan ada kawan you buat uh, macam ni ROI adalah equal to 12.488 uh, divided by 82, dia, dia tulis balik kan dia bagi tahu yang buat macam ni Saya uh, tak tahu dalam exam dia akan, dia akan dapat markah ke tak uh, Tapi satu rugi masa dan saya Saya rasa tak uh, agak agak cruel lah, agak kejam lah kalau dia tak bagi markah kan uh, Tapi I think uh, dicadangkan jangan buat begini bukan sebab tak dapat markah Saya harap lah, saya harap dapat lah markah kalau buat macam ni Tapi rugi masa uh, You salin satu-satu macam ni kan, kan you dah tulis Guna sel tu, letak formula dalam sel tu Uh, ni, show calculation in, Show in the cell Sebab ni calculation kena ada, ada juga tiba-tiba I, I check jawapan tu kan uh, Ada jawapan tapi I tak tahu dia dapat mana figure tu uh, Tapi akhirnya I figure out rupanya dia guna sales Sales bagi capital salah ha. So kalau sales tu memang dah ada figure tu kan Memang tak payah calculate lah Allahualam, I hope this is not too long And I really hope again uh, Nanti you tengok balik soalan ni uh, Dan uh, Make it more general, maksud saya bukan khusus untuk soalan ni Tetapi ambil poin-poin yang you boleh guna untuk topik yang lain bila dia keluar dalam exam Konklusi, konklusi dia adalah kalau benda itu senang dalam topik itu macam formula kan Janganlah buat salah kat situ guys ha, Satu, yang kedua uh, jawab soalan sebagaimana yang soalan tu tanya Bukan sebagaimana yang kita nak Allahuakbar My apologies for any shortcomings and kalau saya macam garang ke apa kan ha, Tapi I hope you learn something Uh, Allah Ta'ala Allah.